you stupid fool. Did you really think you were hitting me? Huh? Bam, bam, bam. Over. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? So Jamal Charlo, he knocks out another fighter that has never been knocked out before. He had two losses on his record, but he had never been KO'd. Dennis Hogan, he lost to Jaime Munguia and Jack Hawke, and neither one of them stopped him. But Jamal Charlo did. You guys have to excuse the delay in me dropping this video. Because of the time difference out here in Thailand, I stayed up to like 4 in the morning watching the AJ fight, and then I ended up falling asleep right before the Jamal Charlo fight started. So I just woke up to watch the fight right now. Now with that out the way, let's get back to business. A lot of opponents that Jamal Charlo has knocked out, he was the first one to stop them. Julian J. Rock Williams comes to mind, Dennis Hogan, and many, many other fighters. Compared to Canelo Alvarez, the majority of opponents that Canelo stopped, they had already been previously knocked out. In fact, that's why Canelo chose those opponents. The reason I bring this up is because we all know that Canelo Alvarez, he vacated his belt, he surrendered his belt to Jamal Charlo. He is no longer the WBC champion. Now, Charlo is the WBC champion. And it's crazy because I would expect Canelo Alvarez fans to say, Canelo needs to go after Jamal Charlo, get that belt back and show that he's not afraid of Jamal Charlo. But instead, they continue to make excuses for Canelo Alvarez avoiding Jamal Charlo. Now these fans are trying to create more distractions and deflections by now comparing the level of opposition of Charlo to Canelo Alvarez. Once again, let me remind you, it was Canelo who gave up his belt to avoid Jamal Charlo. It wasn't Jamal Charlo that did that. Jamal Charlo has been chasing Canelo Alvarez since he was a champion at 154. So first of all, if you want to talk about the level of opposition, when Jamal Charlo knocked out the undefeated, very dangerous Julian J. Rock Williams, Charlo was calling out Canelo then. And Canelo still didn't fight Jamal Charlo. So you fans can't even use the excuse of, who Jamal Charlo is fighting. And let me say this as well. You cannot criticize who Charlo is fighting when we both know that Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez have been avoiding him for years. I've heard so many fans say that Canelo is the best and Golovkin is the second best. But no matter who you have at the top, it's clear we all know that Jamal Charlo and Demetrius Andrade they have been calling out the best middleweights in the world. While Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin, they've been avoiding the best middleweights in the world. Now Canelo fans, just so you can understand this a little bit better, I'm gonna put it in your perspective. Imagine if the roles were reversed and it was Canelo that was constantly calling out Demetrius Andre and Jamal Charlo but they kept avoiding Canelo Alvarez. So, Canelo says, okay, if they won't fight me, I'm gonna go ahead and fight Rocky Fielding. I'm gonna go ahead and fight Sergey Kovalev at light heavyweight. No one would criticize Canelo, why? Because Canelo was calling out the most dangerous middleweights in the world and they refused to fight him. So you can't blame Canelo on fighting Rocky Fielding if Jamal Charlo and Demetrius Andre refuses to fight him, right? This is the situation that Andre and Charlo are in right now. They've been calling this man out since day one, since 154. And once again, it doesn't make sense to me. You only hear this from Canelo Alvarez fans trying to make excuses why Canelo should continue to avoid these fighters. I keep telling you, this would never happen if Errol Spence, if Terrence Crawford had some undefeated, talented Mexican fighter who was his mandatory, who had been calling him out for one year. First of all, it wouldn't even go one year. 
because Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford, they would have took the fight immediately. And you guys know that, don't you? If the roles were completely reversed, there's no way a Terrence Crawford, an Errol Spence, a Deontay Wilder would have gave up his belt to avoid a dangerous, undefeated, talented, mandatory. The more you Canelo fans try to defend Canelo, the worse you make Canelo look. When you sit over here and you say, what has Charlo done? Who has he fought? Andre, who has he fought? If that's the case, who did at least 30 to 40 of Canelo Alvarez's previous opponents fight to qualify to fight Canelo Alvarez? Liam Smith, Rocky Fielding, Matthew Hatton, Amir Khan, James Kirkland, and the list goes on and on and on. You notice when Canelo elected to fight those fighters, none of these Canelo fans trashed the opponent. No one said, how does this guy deserve to fight against Canelo? These are bums. Canelo continues fighting bums to patent his record. You're not gonna hear them say that because as long as it's a guaranteed win for Canelo, they have no problem with the opponent. You don't find that a little odd that they never said anything about Rocky Fielding? They never said anything about Liam Smith? But they talk about Jamal Charlo and Demetrius Andre like they hate their guts. They talk about them just like they talk about Floyd Mayweather. Simply because they want to fight Canelo Alvarez. That's the only reason and because they're a threat to Canelo. You sound like a complete fool when you say, who has Charlo fought when Canelo Alvarez gave up his belt to avoid Charlo? Do you know how ridiculous you sound? And once again, these are excuses that Canelo cheerleaders are making. These are not even excuses that Canelo is making. Who gives up their belt to fight weaker opposition? It's one thing if you give up your belt because you're obligated to fight some number one mandatory who's a tomato can and you decide, hey, I wanna fight the most dangerous guy in the division. So if you guys gonna take this belt, you can have it. We've seen champions do that before. But for someone to give up their belt to avoid an undefeated, dangerous fighter, just to fight some guy who's previously been knocked out before or he's past his prime, who does that, guys? Once again, you would never see Deontay Water doing that. You would never see Errol Spence doing that. You would never see Terrence Crawford doing that. You would never see Andrade or Charlo doing that. This is a Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin move. You Canelo fans can continue to make as many excuses as you want, but it doesn't change the reality. The reality is it's Canelo that's making Andre and Charlo look like monsters. It's Canelo that's making them so relevant because he continues to avoid them. And I'll tell you this, if Canelo is not going to fight them at all, then Charlo and Andre, they should fight against each other. And once they fight against each other, Canelo Alvarez should be considered irrelevant in the middleweight division if he doesn't fight them. I can tell you right now, if Canelo is not willing to fight either one of them now, there's no way he will fight one of them if they fight against each other and win. Canelo Alvarez, he already came out and said he is not going to fight Demetrius Andre. He doesn't want to fight him because he didn't like his style. He already gave up his belt to avoid Jamal Charlo. So once again, it's the Canelo fans that are creating these distractions, deflections, saying, why doesn't Andre fight against Charlo? Canelo Alvarez doesn't care what they do because he has no plans of getting in the ring with them. You Canelo fans keep trying to compare Canelo to Floyd Mayweather, but Floyd Mayweather was the undisputed best fighter in the world, pound for pound. Even websites that did not like Floyd they had him at number one. That's how undeniable he was. With moves like this, Canelo Alvarez will never be pound for pound. He will never even be pound for pound top three with moves like this. We don't even know if Canelo is the best fighter in his own division. When Floyd was at welterweight, Shane Mosley was the number one best welterweight in the division when he knocked out Antonio Margarito. Floyd Mayweather 
obliterated Shane Mosley. When Floyd fought at 130, he was the best at 130. He beat the best fighter at 130, Gennaro Hernandez. When he moved up to 135, he beat the best fighter there, Castillo, after fighting him twice. The only time Canelo fought the best at 160 was before Andre and Charlo emerged and Golovkin was there. And it took him two years to fight Golovkin, but that was two seasons ago. You have to understand, every single season, you're supposed to take on the best teams. I told you guys, Canelo is only going to fight Charlo or Demetrius Andre when they look extremely beatable. And he probably won't even fight him then. When I say beatable, once again, I explained this in the last video. When Jamal Charlo had a tough fight against Karabov, you can't include the Karabov fight because Karabov is a southpaw. He relies on foot movement for defense. So Canelo Alvarez cannot really benefit off of what he's seen in that fight. In fact, styles make fights. And I can tell you right now, Charlo would do way better against Canelo because Canelo is not using foot movement to get away from him. Canelo is not a southpaw. Canelo is going to stand right in front of Charlo, which is why it would make the fight easier for Charlo. I'll close out with saying this. If you have pride and you believe Canelo Alvarez is the best fighter in the world, you don't use excuses condoning him to duck opponents. The more you guys talk about who has Charlo faced, et cetera, et cetera, but you didn't have a problem with Canelo fighting Liam Smith and Rocky Fielding, you make it sound as if you're afraid that Canelo may lose to these guys. How do you guys think it sounds when you say, oh, you're just hating on Canelo if you want him to fight against Charlo or Demetrius Andre? It sounds like you're saying you just want to see him lose because you know he might lose to one of those guys. But remember this, even Canelo's own promoter is saying that Canelo, he has to fight the Charlos and the Andres to be great. So you can sit over there all you want and defend Canelo, but I can tell you guys right now, if Canelo Alvarez doesn't beat the best at 160 or 168 or whatever division he wants to fight at, he will never be taken seriously. You could say he's the big face of boxing. You could say all of that. You could say he makes a lot of money. I don't understand how that benefits you. The only thing that benefits you as a boxing fan is getting to see the best fights. Or if you're a Canelo Alvarez fan, the only thing that benefits you is seeing him win the biggest fights. Him proving that he's the best in his division. That's the only thing you benefit from. You don't benefit off of the millions that Canelo Alvarez makes. He's not inviting you to his family barbecues. So it sounds ridiculous when I hear Canelo fans say, oh, you guys are just mad because he's making a lot of money. What does that have to do with boxing? But yet when Floyd Mayweather was flashing money, you guys hated it. You said all he cares about is money. We know what time it is at the end of the day. I can assure you, there is a reason why no professional trainers or boxers are praising Canelo Alvarez like they praise Floyd Mayweather. Because Canelo Alvarez is not making moves like Floyd Mayweather. For you to say he's doing the same things that Mayweather did, so you guys are telling me that when Canelo Alvarez is 36 years old, he's going to be pound for pound, undisputed, the best fighter in the world? And he's going to be beating guys half his age that are way naturally bigger and stronger than he is? Undefeated champions? You guys know that's a stretch. You guys know that's a stretch. And it's comical to me. Because for you fans to say, oh, Demetrius Andre and Charlo, they're bums. Who have they fought? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You guys know if the other champions at 160 was Liam Smith was Rocky Fielding or some other tomato cans that were just holding the belt, you know Canelo Alvarez would unify all of the belts. You know he would go after the belts. It was Canelo who said he wanted to unify the belts, right? 
So when one champion says he wants to unify the belts, he doesn't care who they fought, how good they are. He wants to unify the belts because he wants to prove he's the best in the middleweight division or whatever division. But when the other champions are a threat to you, that's what makes a fighter change his mind. And that's exactly what happened with Canelo Alvarez. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.